Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omnus and today I will do I will do the top 10 or another top 10 worst cover songs. This was the only one requested to me, so I think that I already did the original a while back. I can't quite recall it, but I've done it apparently. The thumbnail of the original was these boots are made for walking. I believe originally by by Dolly Parton, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really care anyway, uh, either way, so there you go. Uh, the thumbnail is One Direction, indicating that they covered the Blondie hits one way or another, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I believe that's the one. Um, yeah, One Way or Another by Blondie. I'm pretty sure it's Blondie, so there you go. Um, one cover that I really hate is Korn's Another Brick in the Wall cover. It, like a new metal take on Pink Floyd. How how did it, how is that supposed to go well? It doesn't. So yeah, Korn uh, came after that idea or came after the results after it happened. Unfortunately, because they pretty much ruined a Pink Floyd classic. Although it is an overplayed song, but you know, still ruined either way. And the radio, of course, ruined it, but I'd rather listen to that song rather than the corn cover, obviously, so there you go. Yeah, I think most of the picks that I have in mind were on the original list. You know, uh, I believe the Scissor Sisters covering uh, Pink Floyd's Comfortably Numb. If there's one thing that you shouldn't do, don't cover the Beatles and don't cover Pink Floyd, because you, you just can't do it. You know, Pink Floyd's kind of is in that leak too of you can't cover them because it's just impossible just don't cover them um yeah so artists like that i believe maybe they're gonna be on air i believe my cyrus is uh lucy in the sky with diamonds another horrible fucking song or another horrible cover love the classic love the original of course but that cover is just fucking atrocious but i believe that already was on the original list so we just have to see and find out to discover that, so there you go. A good cover song is hard to find. Welcome to watchmojo.com and today we're going This is relatively to new though, it's seven months old, so I, I think I've seen this thumbnail but I haven't seen the video itself, so there you go. Another top ten worst cover songs. Bruce Willis. Before we begin, we publish new content. Bruce Willis Bruce Willis shouldn't touch music in general. I mean, come on now. Uh. <clears throat> the only good thing musically related that he did was um, being in the Gorillaz music video Stylo. And he didn't even sing, he, he just chased the band. That's the only, not even good thing, that's the only cool thing that he did. That was a really cool music video, Stylo. Love that song, but. Hate everything Bruce Willis related, you know, I don't mind his movies, but I hate his musical career, if you can even call that. I, I believe he just had one, he had one attempt and then he quit, I believe. Maybe he had a whole album, I don't know. I probably don't want to find out either way. And ranking them based on not just their own merits, but the quality gap between it and the original. Yeah. If you don't see a cover song you think should have been the White Stripes, first, be sure to check out our original top 10 worst cover songs. Oh yeah, I remember this fucking Hillary Duff fucking cover. Uh, yeah, let's fast forward a bit because I don't have to see that fucking Barbie plastic bitch face. Move on for a bit, yeah, there you go. I'd rather see the Mojo logo rather than that bitch face Hillary Duff. Um, what did I want to say again? Fuck. Uh, I forgot already what I want to say. Maybe rewind it for a bit. Yeah, 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 she covered my generation and I hated the fact that she, uh, you know, in the die, in the die lyrics, she said, I hope I don't die before I get old. She fucking ruined the whole concept of the song. I went off in that video on the original cover song. I just went off like fucking crazy. One of my best rants probably. But censoring that lyric defeats the whole purpose of the song your generation sucks so you hope you die before you get old so you don't have to witness that generation 
Censoring that lyric, I hope I don't die before I get old, in the case that your generation is happy that you have a bright future behind you, which defeats the whole fucking purpose of the song. I'm still so fucking mad at Hillary though, man, stupid fucking bitch. Jesus Christ. I hate that song so much. Uh, oh, Fallout Boy. Yeah, of course, this is gonna suck. Oh, Fallout Boy cover Joy Division. Oh my fucking god, no. A Joy Division classic, although it is kind of an indie hipster, you know, gay song because every like gay ass hipster uses the song. It's still a classic either way, and they fucking ruined it. Fuck's sake. Fallout Boy, originally by Joy Fallout Boy has to ruin everything. Fucking atrocious band. Yeah, Fall Out Boy, if what you just call him the classics, that would be great. Yeah. <laughs> Featuring Missy <laughs> Elliott, what the fuck? I didn't even know that that was a thing. Because, you know, I don't follow Fall Out Boy. And I'm really happy of that. I'm not the biggest Joy Division fan, but I can, you know, it is a classic. Don't, don't fucking touch it. Mainly because, you know, a lot of hipsters love the song, so I'm just kind of, you know... It's just kind of ruined for me because oh, a lot of hipsters love it and, you know... I'm just not a fan of that. You know, a lot of indie faggots so love the song. Well, not per se faggots, but... Just a lot of indie blokes love the song. What is that music video? What the fuck? Jesus Christ, mate. I'm terrible. It's probably not the worst cover I've ever heard, but... You know, Ian Curtis is fucking rolling in his grave. Like, just fucking leave him alone. Number nine. Oh yeah, but this song already sucks ass, so it doesn't really matter. Sweet child of mine, Cheryl Crow. I didn't even know that it was a thing, but uh, yeah, I mean, this song fucking sucks, so it doesn't matter. Maybe I prefer this song though. Maybe I do. Maybe I prefer this version. It it sounds more like you know a college uh, dorm just you know sat on his bed and covered this song. Kind of uh, sat in a music video too, and that's kind of it really, that's how it sounds to me. Which I probably prefer over that annoying ass Slash riff though, I fucking hate that riff. Child of Mine is a classic rock staple, Slash is melodic and heartwarming. Oh okay, that's bas- well yeah. It is, I can't deny it, but it is such an annoying fucking song, it's overplayed, it shouldn't be played ever again, it's just such an annoying fucking song. The guitar riff is one of rock's most iconic. And Axl Rose's vocals, while screechy as ever, are infused with layers of emotion, and the song no. stands out in a sea of classic rock. They're just annoying. On the other hand, Joe Crow's version is just bland. It sounds like countless other acoustic rock songs, complete with a rather interesting. It just sounds like a bland cover, and that's probably how I prefer because Shell Crow, although she is kind of an annoying bitch, but she has, you know, everyone has better vocals in Extra Rose, so I do probably still prefer it. ...chords in place of the iconic guitar riff. Crow's vocals are stellar, we'll give her that much, but we lose the edge and aggressive sound of the original. It doesn't help that it was first featured on the soundtrack for the lackluster 1999 Adam Sandler film, Big Daddy. It is kind of lifeless though, I have to say. Number eight, I probably still prefer it though, because the, the fuck Guns N' Roses. What the fuck is this? Like with most of these covers, I, I didn't even know that Fall Out Boy ruined the classic, Sheryl Crow ruined the classic, but you know, she ruins music in general, so that, you know, that's not, not really a surprise there. Under the Bridge is one of the Red Hot Chili Peppers' most distinguishable songs. It is pretty much their best song, it's the... It's really the only Pepper song that I really love though. I, I do really love Under the Bridge, but that's really it, honestly. Yeah, 
because, because Anthony Kiedis doesn't go off like a fucking crazy funk rapper. I, I hate that about the Peppers. In this one, he's just like singing softly and he croons a bit and you know, also with salt squeeze, that's a decent tune. You know, if the Peppers don't rap, I'm fine with them, but they do that so fucking much. Like with fucking, how's it one song called? Give it away. Give it away. It's so fucking annoying, man. If only they had more songs like this, I would have loved the band. But yeah, you know, I I still think I still think they're good. Flea is a good bassist. Anthony Kiedis is a good writer. John Frusciante, you know, he's overrated as fuck, but he is a decent guitar player. Chad Smith is pretty all right. So the band is solid for what they are. I'm just not a huge fan of them. And I don't know why Anthony Kiedis is running towards the camera half naked. I have no idea what, what he's on about. I hate the pop beat behind it. Like, it ruins the whole purpose of the song. What it makes Under the Bridge such a great song is that it is stellar, you know, musically. Uh, the tone is really somber, it sounds really beautiful, it's a really like like somber tone while it's, you know, it's an up uplifting, fuck, it's a somber tone while it uplifts you. That That's what I love about that song, that's why Under the Bridge is such a classic and why I love it so much. And, you know, the guitar riffs are great, Fleece bass playing is phenomenal of course, Anthony Kiedis is a really like, has a really crooning voice on that tune, so it is a really great tune in general. And All Saints ruined that by that pop beat, the more poppy vocals, the more commercial sound of the song. Although Under Bridge is quite a commercial hit, it is a hit because it uh, hit all the right notes at the right time. And All Saints just kind of make it generic, whereas Under Bridge originally was a very unique and a very inspiring song for many. Even for me, in a way. Not a huge Peppers fan, but I love that song. So, yeah, All Saints, fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you for ruining another classic. Just water under the bridge. No. Fuck you. You ruined the classic. Why, why is it wa water under the bridge? Fuck you. Was it te Like, I, I skipped it or I paused it on a terrible moment with, with some fucking chick with a fucking baseball cap looking at me like that like fucking what is the music for you all about fuck's sake number seven seven nation army marcus collins originally by the white stripes i believe so far i haven't heard any of these covers because they're all fucking horrible this is another case of um the original was really like, again, not a huge White Stripes fan, but, well, not per se a huge Seven Nation Army fan. It is a it is a sports anthem. It was kind of dark and brooding at first, and it was very uh, heavy in the chorus. Very heavy in the, you know, the pre-chorus and stuff like that. In the bridge, whatever. I don't know what I'm on about. Um, but, you know, what I'm trying to say is that the song originally was kind of dark and brooding at first. And it had a really, like, dark melodic riff. And, you know, the guitar that sounds like a bass, that was a really uh, nice detail to the song. And that's all ruined with this generic pop beat that he's going with. With the fucking white background. You know, even the music video is ruined. That original clip was so dark and so brooding and so, you know, red and white. Like the, like the white stripes, you know as they are, you know. So, um, yeah, the, he just ruined it by making it generic and, you know, not ex exciting, not interesting anymore. He just made it bland. That, that's it, really. Seven Nation Army is a rock classic thanks to its stadium-rousing guitar riffs, thumping bass lines. It's, it's really one, one of the last, like, I'm again, I'm not a huge fan of the, of the song, but it's really one of the last, like, stadium anthems, Seven Nation Army. It's really one of the last that, that I can think of, at least. You know, I believe that after that you still had, uh, yeah, I forgot that song, but it was British and it's really obnoxious in your face. That song was also like a stadium hit, but it was pretty bad. So this is like the last good one, I would say. There you go.
Oh, I do really love the guitar solo though. Pretty simplistic, but pretty electric. Oh yeah, of course people from the X Factor fucking ruin everything. Of course they do. The voice X Factor. Every show like that. Fuck those shows. I never watched that shit. Don't feed it and it will get cancelled. Ever thought about that? You fucking normie normies out there? Fuck sake. Rather than antagonism. The lively production is great, but Seven Nation Army was not a great pick to showcase Marx's soul pop sound. What are what are those fucking hands doing though? What the fuck? Oh yeah, the one way or another. Teenage kicks. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, originally by Blondie and the Undertones, 1978. That's kind of weird. It is Harry Styles fucking wearing a Rush shirt? Are you fucking kidding me? He's wearing a Rush shirt, what the fuck? Is he wearing a Presto era Rush shirt? What the fuck is he doing? He's covering Blondie while wearing, wearing a Rush shirt. What, what is he all about? I probably, you know, I don't hate One Direction because they are kind of a catchy boy band. You know, I do really hate boy bands, but One Direction sounds like the most polished and like the most, you know, unoriginal band out of them all. And that's not per se a bad thing because they, you know, they rip off many classic rock arts like U2 and Queen and Clash and, uh, you know, Blondie too, but they, you know, they fucking ruin it. They cover it at least, but most of those songs they just blazingly rip off without, you know, saying it's a cover. The best song ever is pretty much Bob O'Reilly, which is is considered one of the best songs ever. So there you go. Dear God, One Direction, if you happen to get back together, please never cover a rock song again. They took on the 70s. I mean, they're not gonna get back together because they're a boy band and... Those fucking boy bands only stay together, you know, for so long because... You have to be young to be attractive, right? That's the whole gimmick. It's kind of like glam metal. One way or if, you, if you're not young again, then you're not attractive and you should just break up. Teenage kicks. Oh, they ruined two songs for the price of one. Nice. But yeah, in general, I don't hate this song because One Direction is basically, you know, a boy band ripping of rock songs. That's why they're kind of a guilty pleasure for me. They're not the worst thing ever because they rip off good artists. That's really, you know, that's the only excuse I really have for them. Otherwise, fuck them. Well, I didn't even know that he was a Rush fan, but uh, that's pretty cool. It's probably not even the band, it's like, oh, it's like the Eric Clapton movie, right? That's, that's also called Rush. If, if that is the intention of Rush, then oh my god, fuck Harry Styles. But if, if it isn't, good for you, man. You have good, you have good music taste. The music that, in, that you make, though, what the fuck was that? The music that you make, though, is fucking terrible. But the, the taste you have, yeah, it's pretty good. If that is your taste, I don't know. And then they hump the camera. Nice. No. It doesn't have to make sense. You know, One Direction fangirls eat up everything by Harry Styles and Co. Oh, what the fuck? I, I think you can consider ACDC one of those like bands that you can't cover either and you know I'm not comparing them to a Pink Floyd or a Beatles level but I'm still saying that Brian Johnson is one of the most difficult singers to replicate and Shakira although she is a great singer I do really love her vocals I don't primarily love her songs that much she has some bangers in her discography to say the least but yeah, she shouldn't cover the song because it's a hard rocking song, you know, and her covering the tune, you know, 
Um, it's like a little girl going to, you know, a grown man uh, fucking beer bar or something, you know. Like a, like with all wrestlers and stuff like that, you know, a little girl go, going to WWE Raw or something. It's just so inappropriate. That's kind of how it is. Shakira performed a cover of ACDC's Back in Black for her live and off the record album. And, and she probably doesn't have a guitar on stage either, so she's, she's gonna imitate the guitar or something. It's fucking angry show, it's not that difficult. I mean, come on. Which is actually pretty interesting and original. But then the guitars blast, and what follows is a carbon copy of the original. No, no, you know, that's not that bad. She actually has instruments in the cover, so. Yeah, you know, it is a carbon cutout uh, cover. It's not that good. But at least the instruments are still the same, you know. There's not like a generic beat behind it, there's not like. You know, some terrible production behind it. It's just a live cover. I don't mind that, honestly. I just think that Shakira is like one of the most unlikely artists to cover the song because Brian Johnson is such a unique singer. Shakira is too, but on a complete different skill. So she shouldn't have done it in the first place. Instruments are fine, but you're covering an AC DC tune. You know, it's not that difficult. Song, at least put an original spin on it and make it your own. Shakira didn't, and it yeah. lazy I do agree with Mojo to kind of make it original, but you know, those other artists did that, did that and they miserably failed, so you know, what can you do? Just don't fucking touch it. That's the, that's the lesson here. Oh, she, 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 threw, she threw a bit of She Wolf in there at the end. What the fuck? <laughs> I do like that song though, I do like She Wolf, but the Megadeth song destroys the Shakira version. I mean, come on now. It's not even a Megadeth cover, but it's just a way better Megadeth song than it is a Shakira song. There you go. Oh, yeah, I remember this. I, I believe that, um, that Metallica was watching Avril Lavigne while this happened. Or I believe Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg or Avril Lavigne covered. A Metallica song, I believe uh, Snoop Dogg did a Black Album era Metallica song, and yeah, Avril Lavigne did, of course, the Piscum Blood era Metallica load reload. So, there you go. Originally by Metallica. Yeah, Meta Metallica, especially Lars Ulrich and Kirk Hammond, were really intimate with each other in the load reload era. They just all over each other and well, load and reload happens. Which I actually kind of enjoy. I kind of have a guilty pleasure for those albums. Yeah, fuck you too. Fuel certainly isn't Metallica at the height of their talent, but it's still a powerful, hard hitting song. I like weird shit, shut up. Thunderous guitars, a kick ass solo, and James. Wide knuckle tides. Fuel's a great song now, I love Fuel. Whatever. Fuel is pumping in jams. It's not my favorite Metallica song. It's uh, you know it's nearly, it's not even close to being my favorite Metallica album, but it still is a classic, I think. And I still think that you should give Load or Reload a chance. You know they are kind of underwritten, I suppose. You know what Needle Drop and um, and Cover Cut and Age said. If you if you um, fuse the two together and make one great album. Well, then you have a great album, you know, if you fuse the two together, you have one great album, but now you just have two albums with uh, highs and lows. That's kind of how it is, really. She's introduced as a small woman who rocks big, but it seems only one part of that is right. Yeah, the, the first bit. Throughout the song, Levine simply stands on stage and performs with the energy of a brick wall. Like yeah. She's thinking about a gas bill she forgot to pay. She just sounds like um, you know a producer came to her and said, "Oh yeah, cover the song because Metallica is gonna give you money or something because of the Napster bullshit." Oh, I don't know. You know something like that, and Ever Levine was like, "Oh yeah, sure, I cover it. Why not?" You know, I'm not I'm not a Metallica fan, but you know if I get money, then why not? That's how it sounds to me. It sounds phoned in. You know, again, instruments aren't wrong. They, they're really uninspiring. They're just a, a copycat of the original. 
the vocals are really lifeless and really uninspiring to listen to. You know, they don't have that James Hetfield yeah, uh, twang to them, you know, which is a Metallica staple, you know, up until, you know, the Bob Rock era of Bob Rock era of Metallica. Oh, another ACDC cover, amazing. I actually, I actually am a fan of uh, Celine Dion. I think she's a really great vocalist, especially on that uh, Titanic soundtrack. Which she fucking, I'm gonna say this for the rest of my life, but my girl fucking nailed the take in one go. You go, girl, you go. Still a fan of Celine Dion because of that, and she has some, you know, Loki hits, and she is Canadian, so you gotta love that. Uh, and I actually don't mind this song, but it sounds like a soccer mom rendition of ACDC. That, that's, yeah, that's fucking perfect. Divas Las Vegas. Yeah, it sounds like a Diva soccer mom song. Okay, you know what? New ground rule. No more covers of any track from the Back in Black album, especially if you're just going to copy the song. It's a great album, but yeah, don't cover it. Like Shakira's cover, this live performance from Celine Dion and Anastasia is a complete replica of ACDC's You Shook Me All Night Long, only with the women's country vocals. Yeah, it's pretty much ACDC gone, uh, gone country. That's kind of it, honestly. Like, I don't mind this version. It's probably the best sounding version out of them all. You know, outside of the original. But yeah, again, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Nothing original. The vocals aren't interesting enough to distinguish it from the original. Yeah. High five on stage. I haven't high fived anyone in fucking years. Like it's so outdated to do that. That ass though. Celine Dion ass. I mean she just looks like a mom that's you know um she just discovered Asian DZ or something and is like, oh yeah, sure, let's let's karaoke this song. That's how it sound that's how it sounds and looks to me. Number two. Oh um yeah, it smells like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. Number two, smells like Teen Spirit. Take that. Originally, take that. For a bit, before I heard the music, they kind of looked like Queen's Rock for a bit. <laughs> oh, that dirty, sweaty shirt. You know, to the fucking girls. Who wants a sweaty Robbie Williams shirt? Not me. Terrible. I mean, I don't give a shit about Nirvana e either way, so I don't really care if people are gonna piss on Kurt Cobain's grave, I don't really care. You know, except for Courtney Love because she does it on a regular basis because she's a fucking crazy bitch. I mean, come on now. <laughs> what is it? It sounds like a Hawaiian beach song and he's fucking whining all over it. Oh, it was in 97, really. I mean, it's a Nirvana song. How can you fuck that up? This is so bad, it bridges on surreal. Like, it's all about teen angst and all about depression and, you know, being a depressive downing fuck. And they're all like, oh, sing along, oh, clap along with the song, it's so happy. You know, again, they ruin the whole fucking purpose of the song. It's, it's supposed to sound grin and down and depressing, but they fucked that all up, you know, and the heaviness is removed too. I'm not a Nirvana fan, and that song is the bane of my existence. But the song works, it's, you know, played to fucking death, that's why I hate the song. Don't mind Nirvana though, they're overrated as fuck though, but. You know, the song stood for something, you know, when it was released, then it got overplayed and ruined, so there you go. Before we unveil our top pick, I have to play the video in its entirety now, otherwise I don't have any time to do. Yeah, Take On Me, A1 originally by AHA. Fucking hell. Like, it, 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 it's like, you know, seeing your crush on high school and then a few years later she turns into, to, into a complete fucking mess. That's how this song looks to me. Fucking atrocious. But it's not the original band, but you get what I'm saying. 911 is a joke, Duran Duran, originally by Public Enemy. Wow. 
What the fuck? I do I do quite dig Duran Duran, but what the fuck is this? Duran Duran rapping in general is not really good. Girls just wanna have fun, Miley Cyrus originally by Robert Hazard, popularized by Cindy Lauper. Yeah, of course, Miley Cyrus, everything that she touches turns into shit. Kind of the reverse of David Bowie, yeah, I would say. Oh, um... Oh, this is uh, Limp Bizkit's fate, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I got her first! I've never heard this beginning part, but I've, I've heard the chorus. Got her first! This is the worst cover song of all time. Yeah, and I hate Behind Blue Eyes too. Fucking shitting on the Who and George Michael. Fuck Limp Bizkit, man. Fuck Fred Durst. Fuck Limp Bizkit. Fuck Alter Bridge. I believe they were Limp Bizkit, you know, the, the instrument players. You know, you, sh you were still in Limp Bizkit. You could have leave, but you wanted the money. Fuck you guys. Uh, guess we need the door. I have faith. I gotta have faith. The time that the into a screaming mess of dated new metal, complete with Durst's whiny vocals, embarrassing screaming, and idiotic record scratching. Terrible. I mean, there are no words for this cover, it's just atrocious. This is nothing but a shameful take on a classic song. Yep. I believe it's gonna stop at any moment now, so like and subscribe to the channel for future lives as well. What the fuck is he doing there? Yeah, that is it. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I have no time anymore, so I'm gonna quit. Yeah, thank you for watching, like I said, do all the things that I just said in the comments down below, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.